Welcome to the first video in part three of a series on how to build a selectable latching relay circuit. In this video, we're going to be building this circuit. We've talked about it in part one and through the multiple pieces of part two. At this point, we're ready to build it. Let's take a look at the schematic and build the circuit. By the end of this part in the series, we'll have a schematic that looks like this one. This is the completed schematic for the entire circuit. You're more than welcome to pause the video, copy it down. It'll take a little while, but at least then you'll have a schematic to look at as we go along, as well as we'll talk through it in the video. But this schematic has all of the control lines, which can get a little confusing while you're trying to build the individual pieces of the circuit. So what we'll be building off of is one that lacks the control lines and we'll add those in when we get to that part in the build. I've just removed the control lines so that they're not in the way. The very first thing we'll need to do is add three momentary buttons to our breadboard and we'll add these three relays and a fourth momentary button for master reset. I've added three normally open momentary buttons, the ones that we'll be using to latch on a particular latching relay circuit as well as to unlatch the other two. And I've also added the fourth master reset momentary button down here at the bottom and I've connected this breadboard, all the rails of it, together through these pieces of wire. Looking at the top left hand corner of the schematic, the first thing we can notice is with our three momentary buttons we need to connect one of their left hand legs to PCC as well as with the master reset we need to connect one of its left hand legs to ground. We'll be connecting the upper left hand leg of each of our momentary buttons to VCC. We've connected the upper left hand leg of each of our momentary buttons to VCC. Next we need to move down the board to the lower master reset momentary button and we need to connect its upper left hand leg to the ground row like that. When completed with those wires the board should look like this. Okay, On each of these relay circuits we need a diode. I'm using a 1N5819 Schottky style diodes and we need to connect the anode end of that diode to the left side of the relay's coil. Connect the right side, the cathode, to the right side of the relay's coil. Let's add those diodes in to each of the three as well as we'll add in a ground line from the common pole, one common pole of our double pole double throw relay and to the normally open a current limiting resistor to an LED whose anode is pointing to VCC. Its cathodes pointing back toward the normally open pole. We'll add that to each of the circuits. Here's our double pole double throw relay and the pinout is like this. The coil pins are in this row of the breadboard and the first thing I'll do is add a diode across that coal. To protect the NPN transistors we'll add beneath it to switch the low side. We'll take a diode with its cathode, in this case with the diodes I'm using it's marked by a gray band, and add it to the circuit, encircling the coal. That's how it looks. And we need to repeat this same procedure on each of the other two coals. When finished, our board will look like this, where we have a protection diode for the transistors we're going to add a little later, or a flyback diode, whichever way one wants to refer to it, with the cathode pointing to this right hand side of the relays. Next, we can add in our substitute load. In this case, I'm using an LED. And we will need to add a wire from the common pole of our double pole double throw relay to ground. In this case, just matching it up, the common pole of this relay will be in this row of the breadboard. And we need to add a piece of wire from the common pole to ground on each of these relays. When finished, our board should look like this, where we have the common pole of the relay in this row of the breadboard connected to wire to the ground rail. The next thing we need to do is go to the normally open pole which is at the top of these relays 
on the right hand side. There's also one on the left hand side, but on the upper right hand corner is where we need to connect a current limiting resistor and our LED. This is, serves as our load for this circuit. We'll have a red LED, a yellow one, and a green one. We've added in the 330 ohm resistor. Now what we'll need to do is add in our LED with the cathode toward the resistor and the anode of the LED and the VCC rail. With the LEDs I'm using, have a flat side indicating the cathode side of the LED and we'll just add the anode to the VCC rail, the cathode in the same rail as that 330 ohm resistor, like that. And we just need to repeat that same procedure with these two relays. When finished, your board will look something like this. With the anode of each of those LEDs connected to the positive rail, the cathode of each of those LEDs is connected via this 330 ohm resistor to the normally open pole of each of the relays, as well as we have a ground line from the common pole of each of those relays on the right hand side going to ground. And we have our flyback diode with the cathode pointing in the direction of where our VCC line will eventually be connected on each of the relays. It's a good idea, given the size of the circuit, to go ahead and test this. Make sure that it works, that you have your LED in the right orientation. All you have to do is hook a wire in this side and to VCC, and then hook another wire from here to ground. Let's do that. I've turned on the power supply, and now what I should be able to do, if this is hooked up correctly, is take one wire, the VCC wire, connect it to the right hand side of the coil, direction the band, the cathode of the diode is in, connect it to VCC, then take a second wire, connect it to the other side of the coil, same row that the anode of the diode's in, and I should be able to put this wire in ground and the LED should light up. And it does. So that tells me that I have hooked up everything correctly at this point. And I need to repeat this procedure with each of these relays just to make sure. Just swap the ground line to the other side of the relay. Swap the VCC line to the other side of the relay. And then test it. Make sure that it works before moving on. Same procedure. In this case, I'll touch the ground rail over here. Okay, so we know that all of our relays are switching. We know that we have the wiring correct up to this point. Let's look back at the schematic.